hello guys so now we shall be discussing uh, some of the very important topics that are related with the thorax okay so in the thorax also the first important topic which we shall be focusing on will be the diaphragm okay now even in the diaphragm right even in the diaphragm uh, we shall discuss what are the important anatomical structures that are located within the diaphragm and also the openings so within the diaphragm also we shall discuss the important topics that are related with the diaphragm and in the diaphragm you know that the diaphragm separates the thoracic cavity from the abdominal cavity okay now coming to this uh, what is the important thing here so this is the diaphragm which you are looking from the top okay now here there are two important things what are these two important things there is a peripheral part of the diaphragm and the central part of the diaphragm so this part this part which you can see over here is called as a peripheral diaphragm okay and the center white part is called as a central part of the diaphragm so how is the peripheral part peripheral part is muscular so peripheral part of the diaphragm is muscular whereas central part of the diaphragm is tendinous so tendinous part is the central part of the diaphragm okay next important thing is that these are some of the few important things which you need to keep in mind that you know that diaphragm is a principal muscle for respiration second important thing is that diaphragm originates from three important places so what are those three important places over here so in this picture it is not clear but anyways here let us try to figure out these things okay see first important thing is that you can see that the diaphragm is originating from the sternum exactly which part of the sternum the xiphoid part of the sternum the xiphoid process next on the sides if you see diaphragm also originates from the coastal margin that is from the ribs now tell me the upper ribs or lower ribs it originates from the lower ribs exactly speaking it originates from the lower six ribs and next vertebral part you can see here part of the diaphragm are attached to the vertebra so there are three origins of the uh, diaphragm one is called as a sternal origin sternal origin in the sense the xiphoid uh, process over here next important part is the coastal origin coastal origin in the sense the ribs over here this comes here this this is called as a coastal origin third important part is the vertebral origin so this is the vertebral origin over here i mean mostly the lumbar vertebra okay so there are three different types one is called sternal origin that is through the xiphoid process coastal origin through the lower six ribs vertebral origin vertebral origin in the sense see there is a right crust of the diaphragm i will i will discuss in detail what is right crust what is left crust and all but uh, as far as this picture is concerned you can see that this is the right crust of the diaphragm this is the left crust of the diaphragm and there are five arcuate ligaments later on i'll draw the picture and i will show you what is right crust what is left crust and what are the arcuate ligaments okay coming to the right crust okay so right crust originates from l1 l2 and l3 whereas left crust originates from l1 and l2 only okay left crust originates from l1 and l2 so if you look at the real picture over here this is the diaphragm uh, where i have discussed about the origins now just look at this picture this is t12 l1 l2 and l3 so this is the t12 l1 l2 and l3 so you can see you can see that this particular ligament which have drawn in the center right this particular ligament which have drawn in the center over here this is called as the median arcuate ligament what is this this is called as median arcuate ligament now after this median arcuate ligament on either side you can see this part that is hanging down you see this part of the diaphragm that is hanging down like this right and even this part of the diaphragm that is hanging down like this one is called as a right crust another one is called as a left crust as i have already discussed here there are two parts right right crust as well as the left crust so from where right crust is originating l1 l2 l3 and left crust is originating from l1 and l2 so just look at the picture here right crust is originating from l1 l2 l3 whereas left crust is originating only from l1 and l2 so let me write it down so this part over here is the right crust okay and this part over here is the left crust so two important things one is called as a right crust 
one is called as a right crust and the other one is called as a left crust okay so right crust of the diaphragm and the other one is called as the left crust of the diaphragm right now after this right crust and left crust the next important thing which you need to know over here what is this coming to the arcuate ligaments so what are the different kinds of arcuate ligaments you have got so just look here the ligaments which are arc shaped are called as arcuate ligaments okay you can see there is one arcuate ligament which starts all the way from the side of the l2 right you can see this it starts all the way from the side of the l2 and goes all the way and attaches to the tip of the transverse process of l1 right so you see this is the tip of the transverse process of l1 see this one this is a tip of the transverse process of l1 so all the way it starts from the side of l2 all the way till the tip of the transverse process of l1 okay so this one over here is called as medial arcuate ligament this one over here is called as the medial arcuate ligament medial arcuate ligament okay the next important one the next important one starts all the way from the tip of the transverse process of l1 all the way till t12 rib right so this one over here is called as a lateral arcuate ligament lateral arcuate ligament so there are two important arcuate ligaments one is called as a medial arcuate ligament and the other one is called as a lateral arcuate ligament right so overall overall this forms the diaphragm okay i'll show you it in the next picture but before that another important thing you have to know what is this medial arcuate ligament and what is this lateral arcuate ligament first of all how many arcuate ligaments are present over here so there is one lateral arcuate on the right and on the left so two lateral arcuate there are two medial arcuate so completely four and there is one median arcuate how many ligaments completely five so that is what i was telling you in the starting five arcuate ligaments the right crust the left crust all of them form what the vertebral part okay all of them originate from the vertebra now if you look at uh, if you look at this medial arcuate ligament now what how is medial arcuate ligament is formed is that it is formed from the fascia of psoas major so the fascia of psoas major becomes thick to form this medial arcuate ligament okay so this muscle over here is your psoas major muscle so as major muscle in the same way there is another muscle over here this is called as quadratus lumborum this muscle over here it is called as quadratus quadratus lumborum so quadratus lumborum forms what it forms a lateral arcuate ligament okay so just look at the things which i have written here medial arcuate ligament arises from the side of l2 to the tip of the transverse process of l1 next medial arcuate ligament is what medial arcuate ligament is the thickening of which fascia it is a thickening of the fascia of what psoas major thickening of the fascia of the psoas psoas major thickening of the fascia of psoas major okay next important thing is the lateral arcuate ligament is the thickening of the fascia of quadratus lumborum quadratus lumborum okay right so after this is formed we have discussed about the origins and where is it all inserting the entire muscle inserts to the central tendon this is the central tendon right so this center part center white part is called as the central tendon where the all these muscles are inserting so it is insert, inserting into the central tendon inserting into the central tendon next important thing is that so if you can look at this picture you will completely understand that this entire muscle right so you see this entire muscle finally it is fanning inside and it is attaching to your central tendon like this okay now if you can see here in the right crust as well as the left crust there are some yellow color dots which are written over here right so these yellow color dots which are mentioned over here these are nothing but called as planconic nerves so there are uh, splanconic nerves on the right as well as on the left so this is called as a right splanconic nerve
and here we have got the left splanchanic nerve okay right as well as the left splanchanic nerve and next important thing is that if you look at the muscular part on the top you see there are two foramens over here right so what are these foramens these are called as foramen of morgagni what is this this is called as foramen of morgagni okay so what is the use of this foramen of morgagni within this foramen there are spaces called as space of larry through which the superior epigastric vessels will pass so what vessels will pass through this foramen of morgagni that is the superior epigastric vessels superior epigastric vessels now let us uh, discuss the openings of the diaphragm now if you look at the openings of the diaphragm over here this is from the lateral wave okay now in this lateral wave you can see that this part is called as a body of the sternum this is called as a manubrium right so here if you look this is the sternum over here this is from the lateral side right now in this lateral side you can see three openings you see one opening which is uh, highlighted with the blue next with the green and the red so this opening with the blue is at the level of t8 okay t8 next the next opening is at the level of t10 vertebra okay so exactly which part of the vertebra also you have to mention here it is present at the body of t8 okay second one it is present at the body of t10 and third one it is present at the lower body of i mean the lower border of the body of t12 vertebra so it is present at the level of t12 especially at which part of the t12 vertebra if you take t12 vertebra we are discussing about the lower border lower border of what lower border of the body of t12 body of t12 okay so t8 these are the openings of the diaphragm at t8 there is one opening t10 and t12 there are three major openings here okay now let us see what are these the names of these openings you can remember by the mnemonic voa okay what is v v stands for vena cava opening o stands for esophageal opening and a stands for aortic opening okay so if you see here vena cava opening if you look at from the top it is quadrangular where is it present t8 so through this what are the structures that pass so one structure which we already discussed that is vena cava which vena cava that is inferior vena cava second important structure that passes is the right phrenic nerve so what is the structure that passes over here that is the right phrenic nerve okay so these are the structures that pass through the vena cava opening second important thing is esophageal opening so from the esophageal opening what structures will pass there are three important structures that pass the first important is the esophagus itself esophagus itself the second important thing is the right and the left vagal trunks right and the left vagal trunks and third important thing is the esophageal branches of left gastric artery esophageal branches of left gastric artery so these are the three important structures that pass okay now coming to the last opening that is a aortic opening aortic opening is what it is circular where is it present t12 exactly speaking the lower border of the body of t12 so here there are three important things so the first important thing that passes is aorta okay and a also stands for azygous vein azygous vein and the third important thing is and the third important thing is thoracic duct so these are the three important structures that pass from below okay so these are the structures which you need to know that is vena cava opening that is quadrangular then this is very very important table here so aortic opening is circular esophageal opening is oval so they are at the levels of t8 body of t8 body of t10 and lower border of the body of t12 okay so these are the important things now the next important uh, thing which you need to know is regarding the intercostal space okay so regarding this intercostal space there are uh, muscles which you need to discuss arteries at the same time the nerves also so coming to the muscles there are three important muscles one is called as external intercostal internal intercostal and transverse 
thoracic muscles so if you look at the external intercostal or you can also call this transversus thoracis as innermost intercostal okay so external intercostal are located completely superficial which means if you can look over here so these muscles are called as external intercostal muscles okay so these muscles over here are external intercostal muscles so external intercostal muscles if you can follow this line red color line external intercostal muscles coming all the way anteriorly from the back back we have got the vertebra anteriorly we have got the sternum so anteriorly it is attaching to the sternum with the help of a membrane you see this particular green color line over here this membrane over here is called as anterior intercostal membrane what is this this is called anterior intercostal membrane okay this is anterior intercostal membrane right second important thing second important thing over here is that after external intercostal we have got the next important thing that is internal intercostal muscle after external intercostal we have got the internal intercostal so here we have got our internal intercostal muscle internal intercostal muscle okay so internal intercostal muscle started from the sternum previously the external intercostal started from the back right near the vertebra now it is starting from the sternum and as it goes on to the back it is ending up with a membrane and this time this membrane is called posterior intercostal membrane so this is your posterior intercostal membrane this is called as posterior intercostal membrane now after this the next layer which we come across is innermost intercostal innermost intercostal is also called as transversus thoracis muscle so here we have got three different uh, types of muscles within this what are those three different types of muscles see this one is called muscle number 1 okay and this is called muscle number 2 and this is called muscle number 3 so muscle number 1 is called as subcostalis it is called as subcostalis muscle number 2 is called as intercostalis intimus so you see this one this is called as inter costalis intimus okay and finally this is a third important muscle and this is called as sternocostalis sterno costalis so three important muscles one is subcostalis another one is intercostalis intimus and third one is sternocostalis okay so these are the three important things together they will form the innermost intercost or also called as transversus thoracis muscle okay now the next important thing more inner to it more inner to the innermost intercostal muscles we have got a fascia and that fascia is called as endothoracic fascia so you can see this brown color line which i have drawn so this is called as your endothoracic fascia so this one over here is your endo thoracic fascia okay now after the endothoracic fascia the next layer which we have got is called as a parietal pleura and next we have got visceral pleura so you see this one this is called as parietal pleura parietal pleura and the next one is called as your visceral pleura okay now you can also see a nerve over here right you see this nerve is starting from the back so this particular nerve which is starting from the back over here this particular nerve over here is called as intercostal nerve intercostal nerve and this intercostal nerve is dividing into two branches see here this intercostal nerve is coming front you see this is the intercostal nerve that is coming here it is dividing into one branch here laterally and another branch comes in the front okay so there are two branches so one branch here and this is the second branch so this one branch which is coming here is called as a lateral cutaneous branch lateral cutaneous nerve or lateral cutaneous branch okay the next important branch over here is a anterior cutaneous branch see this one number 2 is your anterior cutaneous branch cutaneous branch so there are two branches lateral cutaneous branch as well as the anterior cutaneous branch okay so here the important thing is that 
whenever you are doing a pleural tap which means when you are putting a needle inside the pleural cavity what are the layers you basically cross so that is a thing we have to discuss but before discussing that this is a cross section so you do a cross section and from the top if you are seeing you will see the outermost external intercostal after that you have seen the middle intercostal or inner intercostal and next you have got the innermost intercostal innermost intercostal is divided into three one is called as just i told you that is the subcostalis next one is called as intercostalis intimus and third is called as sternocostalis inner to that you have got another layer called as endothoracic fascia after that you have got parietal pleura and later visceral pleura and finally the lungs okay so this is the picture which you see on the cross section now whenever you look whenever you look from the vertical section when you make a vertical section and look from the side this is how it looks vertically if you are cutting the body and you see that one rib is on the top one rib is on the bottom right so what are the muscles over here see this is called as your external intercostal muscle okay after external intercostal see this muscle over here is called as this particular muscle over here is called as internal intercostal muscle external intercostal and internal intercostal and this one over here is called as innermost intercostal innermost intercostal muscle now between the internal intercostal muscle and innermost intercostal muscle which we also discussed it as uh, the transversus muscle right so between both of them you have got three important neurovascular bundles so with the blue is called as the vein so one is called as the vein the with the red is called as the artery and with the green is called as the nerve so there is an intercostal vein intercostal artery and intercostal nerve okay so v a n but in the first inter see this is one intercostal space between two ribs we have got the space called as intercostal space now this arrangement of v first then a then n is present for all intercostal spaces except first intercostal space except first intercostal space okay so except first intercostal space remaining all intercostal spaces have got vein artery and nerve then what the first intercostal space is having first intercostal space is having in the reverse order that is nerve artery and vein okay in the first intercostal space first nerve is there next artery next vein the remaining all intercostal spaces we have got v a n now coming to the pleural tap if i wanted to do the pleural tap will i puncture will i puncture on the top or on the bottom i will puncture on the bottom why because here i don't have any neurovascular bundles so what i will do is that i will find the rib exactly on the superior surface of the rib i will pass the needle okay so if this is the rib exactly on the top of the rib i will pass the needle instead of finding the rib and passing the needle below the rib it is better to pass above the rib because here you don't have any kind of neurovascular structures okay so this is the place for pleural tap pleural tap this is the place for pleural tap okay now coming on to the discussion with the intercostal nerves what is the intercostal nerve you can look here that this particular thing is your spinal nerve spinal nerve divides into two branches one is called as a dorsal rami or dorsal division next is called as a ventral rami or ventral division you see this part is a ventral rami or ventral division so this ventral rami or ventral division is nothing but this forms your intercostal nerve is nothing but called as your intercostal nerve okay so how many pairs of ribs do we have we have got 12 pairs of ribs which which means between two ribs one space so how many intercostal spaces we have got we have got 11 intercostal space now beneath the 12th rib we don't call it as intercostal space because that is the last rib so what do we call that region beneath the 12th rib that is called subcostal region but whatever it is 12 pairs of ribs how many intercostal spaces 11 now how many intercostal nerves are there in each intercostal space there is one intercostal nerve so 11 intercostal nerves are there right along with that beneath the 12th rib that is there is there will be subcostal nerve beneath the 12th rib there will be subcostal nerve so just for an example just for a clarity purpose i hope you understood whatever i told you but still you see here 
here there is one intercostal nerve two three four five and so on so on so and finally here also there is a nerve but this is nerve is present beneath the ribs beneath the rib the 12th rib right and this is called a subcostal nerve clear this is called as a subcostal nerve this is called subcostal nerve so overall if we classify intercostal nerves there are two different types of intercostal nerves one is called as the typical intercostal nerves right and the other one is called as a atypical intercostal nerve so one is called typical another one is called as a atypical so typical intercostal nerves are what typical intercostal nerves what do you mean by typical and atypical typical intercostal nerves are the nerves that are present only in the intercostal space they do not go and supply any region or any structure outside the intercostal space so for example third intercostal nerve fourth fifth and sixth third fourth fifth and sixth these intercostal nerves they lie within the third intercostal space fourth fifth and sixth they supply only that intercostal space nothing other than that intercostal space so they supply only that intercostal space in the same way what do you mean by atypical atypical in the sense these intercostal nerves not only supply the intercostal space their respective intercostal space but also they come out of the intercostal space and give branches to the other structures also for example atypical in the sense the first okay second uh, fourth fifth sixth third fourth fifth sixth is here so what we have to write seventh eighth ninth tenth as well as eleventh right so what what all these do they supply only the intercostal space no they also supply structures beyond the intercostal space beyond the intercostal space okay which means the other regions i will tell you what are these other regions which means the other regions also for example if you look at the first intercostal nerve what does first intercostal nerve do first intercostal nerve will supply i mean first intercostal nerve is t1 so this nerve will supply that particular intercostal space it will come out and join with the brachial plexus you see it is not particularly confined only to that intercostal space it is also supplying outside the intercostal space in the same way if you take t2 this is called as intercostobrachial nerve intercostobrachial nerve in the sense it supplies the intercostal region and also it supplies to your brachial region brachial region in the sense it supplies the skin of the axilla and also the medial part of the upper arm okay it supplies the skin of axilla and medial part of the upper arm that is the reason why whenever a patient is having chest pain you will have a particular pain on the left side right that to the left side of the arm okay why this kind of pain is called as what this kind of pain is called as a referred pain in case of coronary artery disease right you see a referred pain to the left side problem is in the heart but the pain is on to the complete left arm why it is because of the nerve from the intercostal space is running to the hand and that is your intercostobrachial nerve which is t2 from t7 till t11 these are called as thoraco abdominal it means they supply the intercostal space the thorax and they come out of that and supply the abdomen also okay so that is the reason why they are going out that is why they are called as atypical so what i was telling you let us take an example of t1 okay so what does this t1 do joins with joins with the brachial plexus joins with what joins with the brachial plexus next after the t1 the next important thing we have got is a t2 the next important thing is got as a t2 so t2 t2 is what t2 is intercostal brachial nerve okay inter costal brachial nerve so what does this do yeah tell me what does this do what does this intercostal brachial nerve do it supplies the skin of the axilla and medial part of the upper arm supply skin of axilla and medial part of upper arm medial part of the upper arm 
and that is the reason why in case of coronary heart disease that is why in case of coronary heart disease patient is going to have the referred pain and finally finally from t7 till t11 right so t7 till t11 this nerve is called as thoraco abdominal nerve thoraco abdominal nerve okay so these are some of the important things which you need to know now coming to the pleural tap as i told you so where do you do the pleural tap you do in the mid axillary line so if you are doing the pleural tap okay if you are doing the pleural tap so what are the layers you basically cross the first layer you cross is the skin after the skin you pierce what the fascia you pierce the fascia after that you pierce the muscle called as serratus anterior serratus anterior if you remember that we discussed that serratus anterior is supplied by long thoracic nerve paralysis would lead to winging of scapula next the fourth important thing is external intercostal muscle external intercostal muscle after external intercostal internal intercostal internal intercostal muscle next we have got innermost intercostal muscle right so intercostalis intimus i told you we have got three parts out of which one is intercostalis intimus next we have got the fascia that is endothoracic fascia endothoracic fascia after endothoracic fascia we have got the parietal pleura so once we uh, puncture this parietal pleura then we are in the pleural cavity so from outside to inside in the mid axillary line this is the uh, structures you are puncturing and going inside now after the intercostal nerves discussion is done let us discuss about the intercostal arteries there are two different types of intercostal arteries one is called as a anterior intercostal artery and posterior intercostal artery next we shall uh, start the discussion with the intercostal arteries so as i told you there are two different types of intercostal arteries one is called as the anterior intercostal and the next one is called as a posterior intercostal artery if you have uh, discuss if you have read the discussion about the upper limb there i have told you we have got an artery called as subclavian artery so we have got an artery called as subclavian artery okay a branch of subclavian artery is called as internal thoracic artery so this artery is called as internal thoracic artery okay now this internal thoracic artery comes down all the way till which intercostal space and by the way all these are the ribs so all the way it is coming down till the sixth intercostal space in the sixth intercostal space what it is happening this internal thoracic artery divides into two branches one is called as a musculophrenic artery you see one branch is called as the musculophrenic this branch is called as a musculophrenic and the next branch is called as a superior epigastric artery you see this artery see this artery is called as superior epigastric artery epigastric artery now first important thing is that so each rib each intercostal space right each intercostal space uh, is having two intercostal arteries each intercostal space is having how many arteries each intercostal space is having two intercostal arteries and these intercostal arteries are anterior intercostal arteries so we are discussing about anterior intercostal arteries first so each intercostal space is having two intercostal arteries and these two intercostal arteries are coming from which part they are coming from the internal thoracic so first intercostal space two intercostal arteries second two third two fourth two fifth two but in the sixth it has divided into two i told you one is musculophrenic and superior epigastric so in the seventh intercostal space eighth and ninth the two anterior intercostal arteries they are not emerging from the internal thoracic artery rather they are emerging from what they are emerging from the musculophrenic so from the seventh intercostal space onwards this musculophrenic artery is the one which which gives two anterior intercostal arteries so before the seventh intercostal space it was the direct branch that is the internal internal thoracic artery which was giving two branches of anterior intercostal artery in the space okay so this is one very important thing you have to know so if you look at this picture it will be completely clear so this is your subclavian artery and it is giving a branch down uh, internal thoracic artery 
exactly in the sixth intercostal space internal thoracic artery is dividing into musculophrenic and superior epigastric so this is what i was telling you in each uh, space there are two branches that are given like this two branches but from the sixth space onwards the branches are given by internal thoracic or musculophrenic they are given by musculophrenic okay so this is one very important thing you have to know after anterior intercostal we will discuss about the posterior intercostal so posterior intercostal also the first and the second posterior intercostal they arise from superior intercostal artery okay so where is this superior intercostal artery here see this part over here is your superior intercostal artery so superior intercostal artery is a branch of what what is this branch here this is called as costo cervical trunk what is this this is costo cervical trunk so superior intercostal artery is a branch of costo cervical trunk and costo cervical trunk is a branch of costo cervical trunk is a branch of what it is a branch of the subclavian artery subclavian artery so overall if i have to tell you that subclavian artery gives out a branch called as costo cervical trunk and one branch of costo cervical trunk is superior intercostal artery and from superior intercostal artery we have got the first and the second posterior intercostal arteries so that is what given here that the first and second posterior intercostal arteries they are arising from the superior intercostal artery which is a branch of costo cervical trunk see here arising from superior intercostal artery which is a branch of costo cervical trunk now from the third fourth fifth all the way till the 11th so from where are these branches arising these anterior intercostal arteries they are directly arising from the descending aorta all of you know that this is your descending aorta descending abdominal aorta so all the way from 3rd to 11 so all the way from 3rd to 11 they arise directly from the descending aorta now coming on to the next discussion of azygous and hemi azygous vein okay so before discussing this this is very very easy just remember a line and one line intersecting like this and other line like this okay so this is your as hemi azygous and azygous veins so what are the important uh, labelings which we can do over here that on the left side we have got this vein called as left brachiocephalic so if there is left brachiocephalic vein if there is left brachiocephalic vein there will also be right brachiocephalic vein see this vein over here is called as your right brachiocephalic right brachiocephalic vein so left brachiocephalic and right brachiocephalic vein now what are all these branches here these branches are your intercostal branches okay these are your intercostal veins so if you see on the right side and by the way this is your inferior vena cava if you see on the right side the first first intercostal artery uh, sorry the first intercostal vein where is it draining it is draining into right brachiocephalic on the left side also the first intercostal vein on the left is draining into left brachiocephalic vein so one is called as a right intercostal vein another one is called as a left intercostal vein next down here this particular uh, vein over here is called as a zygous vein this is called a zygous vein okay now after a zygous in the center of a zygous or half of a zygous is called hemi right so this one is called a hemi a zygous hemiazygous vein now the upper one is also looking like hemiazygous so you call it as accessory accessory hemiazygous vein okay accessory hemiazygous vein so coming to this azygous vein if you look here what are the veins located here so the uh, second third and fourth two three and four intercostal veins join together to form a right superior intercostal vein joined together to form what right superior intercostal vein okay right superior intercostal vein and this right superior intercostal vein drains directly into what it is directly draining into a zygous vein in the same way on the left side on the left side we have got two three and four 
these three intercostal veins they join together and form the left superior intercostal vein so this is the left superior intercostal vein they are draining into what they are draining into left brachiocephalic so what is the difference you need to know right superior intercostal vein is not draining into right brachiocephalic rather it is draining into the azygous vein whereas left brachio left superior intercostal veins they are draining into left brachiocephalic this is one difference which you need to know next important thing is that 5th 6th 7th 8th 9th 10th as well as 11th all these intercostal veins they are draining into azygous here 5 6 7 8 drains into accessory and 9 10 11 9 10 11 drains into hemiazygous okay next important thing which you need to know here is that so let us discuss about formative tributaries of azygous and hemiazygous vein so if you look at the azygous vein which is on the right you have got a b and c what is branch a here a is called as the right subcostal because it is the last one any last branch is called as a subcostal branch so this is the right subcostal branch now b is going up so that is why you call it as ascending lumbar right ascending right lumbar ascending vein so here there is right lumbar ascending vein then the b over here this will also be right lum left lumbar ascending vein if this a here is right subcostal vein the a here will be the left subcostal vein next if you look at the c on the right side which is directly uh, draining into inferior vena cava this is a right lumbar azygous vein okay if there is right lumbar azygous there will be left lumbar azygous so the c on the opposite side is left lumbar azygous so if you look at the tributaries of azygous vein there are three important a b c what is a standing for a standing for the right side so right subcostal vein right subcostal vein next b stands for right lumbar ascending vein right lumbar ascending vein okay next we have got the right lumbar azygous vein right lumbar azygous vein the same structures on the left left subcostal vein we have got the left lumbar ascending vein we have got the right lumbar is i guess way okay so these are the things the next important topic which i shall be discussing is the pleura as well as the recesses right so you know that we have got the lungs like this in the center these are the lungs now surrounding the lungs we have got two different types of pleura so what are the two different types of pleura one is called as the parietal pleura one is called as a parietal pleura and the other one is called as a visceral pleura parietal pleura as well as a visceral pleura now uh, if you look at both of this pleura parietal and visceral together they are covering the lungs so here if you see there are four different types so if you look at this pleura there are four different types the yellow color part which i have highlighted is called as a cervical pleura is called as a cervical pleura the next second number is called as a coastal pleura why it is called coastal pleura because here you have got the ribs so this part of the pleura is attached to the ribs so you called as coastal pleura and the third important one here you have got the diaphragm that is why you called as a diaphragmatic pleura and the last important one is this one here you have got the heart okay so that is why it is called as a mediastinal pleura because it is facing towards the mediastinum so two four important types of pleura cervical pleura next we have got the coastal pleura because this part of the pleura is attached to the ribs third important one is called as a diaphragmatic pleura diaphragmatic pleura because this is attached to the diaphragm and fourth important part is the mediastinal pleura mediastinal pleura okay now within this pleura pleura is containing pleural fluid there are some places within the pleura where they are expanded 
okay some places of the pleura are expanded this expanded places of the pleural cavity is called as a recess for example if you see here see this part of the pleura the parietal and the visceral pleura this part is expanded so this is called as a recess so here also it is an expanded so this is also called as a recess so this recess over here is called as a costo diaphragmatic because this is the costal this is the diaphragmatic exactly if you draw a vector it is present between the costo as well as the diaphragm so you call it as a costo costo diaphragmatic recess costo diaphragmatic recess okay and remember one thing this costo diaphragmatic recess is the place where the fluid accumulates that is why it is the most dependent region even in the pleural effusion also lots and lots of fluid gets accumulated here and that is why you can't even see um, the costophrenic angle also okay next important thing the next important thing over here is you have to know where this costo diaphragmatic start and where does it end so costo diaphragmatic recess starts all the way here and it ends all the way here it is all the way present between the 8th to 10th intercostal space okay so where exactly in the mid axillary line so you tell me now if i wanted to do a pleural tap will i puncture at 8 no if i'm puncturing at 8 i'm injuring my lung i cannot puncture before 8 like 7 6 and all so either i have to puncture between 8 and 10 so the safest position is between 9 and 10 if you are puncturing there in the mid axillary line in the 9th 10th intercostal space right space between the 9th and 10th rib there if you are puncturing it then what is happening directly you will end up in the costo diaphragmatic recess and then you can take out the fluid and see whether it is a transudate or an exudate next important thing is here we have got the costo medial recess the next important recess is costo medial recess two important recesses okay so one is called as the costo diaphragmatic recess which is the most dependent next one is called as a costo medial recess now let us look at the nerve supply over here let us look at the blood supply over here coming to the blood supply the parietal pleura and the visceral pleura together remember it as pimb 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 okay so what is parietal pleura uh, supplied by it is supplied by uh, let us say four different arteries p stands for pericardiophrenic artery pericardiophrenic artery i stands for intercostal artery intercostal artery and i also stands for internal thoracic artery internal thoracic artery and m stands for musculophrenic artery musculophrenic artery so how many arteries over here pericardiophrenic intercostal artery internal thoracic artery and musculophrenic artery in the same way visceral pleura is having only one that is b b stands for what branchial vessels okay b stands for what branchial vessels okay so these are the arteries that are supplying your parietal as well as the visceral pleura now let us discuss about the root of the lung okay so this is one of the very important topic so if you look here the root of the right lung as well as the left lung what are the structures that are located first of all let us uh, mention the arteries so this artery which you can which you can see over here is called as a bronchial artery so what is this here we have got the bronchial artery so on the right side how many bronchial arteries we have got one on the left side how many bronchial arteries we have got two next important thing is that above the artery is epi below the artery is hypo so above the bronchial artery if you see a bronchus which means uh, this particular one this is called as epi arterial bronchus or ep arterial bronchus ep arterial bronchus so next important thing is if you see a bronchus below the bronchial artery this is called as a hyparterial bronchus hyparterial bronchus ep arterial bronchus and hyparterial bronchus next important thing is that you can see two important arteries see this artery is called as a left 
pulmonary artery and here you have got is the right pulmonary artery left pulmonary artery as well as the right pulmonary artery okay left and right pulmonary artery right now after this we have to discuss one more uh, um, bronchi over here right so on the right side it is aparterial and left side uh, right side it is aparterial as well as hypartical but on the left side we have got only one bronchus that is called as left principal bronchus so that is why this is called as a left principal bronchus left principal bronchus okay next important thing is that here we have got a vein over here this is called as a right pulmonary vein so which is on the top so right superior pulmonary vein and here we have got the right inferior pulmonary vein inferior pulmonary vein in the same way we have got the uh, superior and inferior pulmonary vein on the left side also and hanging down this is called as a pulmonary ligament so the only difference here which you need to know between the right and left lung over here is that right lung is having one bronchial artery which is a branch of third post intercostal artery okay post intercostal artery in the sense posterior intercostal artery left lung is having two bronchial arteries which are a direct branch of thoracic iota okay the next important topic which we shall be discussing is the bronchopulmonary segment now in this bronchopulmonary segment you can see this particular part is called as a tertiary bronchus okay now on the sides of the tertiary bronchus these two one is called as a bronchial artery another one is called as a bronchial vein so together i'm writing it as bronchial vessels so here you have got the bronchial vessels so this entire unit is called as a single uh, bronchopulmonary segment now one bronchopulmonary segment and the other bronchopulmonary segment is separated by which pleura over here it is separated by your visceral pleura okay so here visceral pleura what is it doing it is forming a septa okay it is forming a septa between the two bronchopulmonary segments See, this is one this is a second bronchopulmonary segment so it forms a septa and that septa is called as a pulmonary septa now within the pulmonary septa there is a vein over here that is called as a pulmonary vein so pulmonary vein is located in between the two segments so that is why intersegmental it is not located intra it, which means it is not located in the segment it is located in between the segments next important thing is that these bronchopulmonary segments are aerated by which bronchus that is a tertiary bronchus so this bronchus over here is your tertiary bronchus this is the one which supplies air to the end part i mean the bronchopulmonary segment so if you take right lung and left lung, right lung has got three lobes left lung has got two lobes now within each lung there are 10 bronchopulmonary segments so in the right lung the what are the bronchopulmonary segments here we have got 3 here we have got 2 here we have got 5 and on the left side 5 and 5 okay so let us name all these bronchopulmonary segments the first one always which is on the top which is like an apex this is called as apical second one is the posterior bronchopulmonary segment and third one is the anterior bronchopulmonary segment okay in the middle lobe we have got two one is called as the lateral bronchopulmonary lateral another one is the medial okay next what is this entire part over here this entire part is called as the base so what do you need to know over here you need to know that there are five important bronchopulmonary segments you can remember by the mnemonic s you can remember by the mnemonic s palm s palm what does s over here stands for s over here stands for superior basal why are you calling it as basal because we are discussing about the base of the lung next p stands for what posterior basal posterior basal next a stands for what anterior basal okay l stands for what lateral basal and m stands for medial basal right if you look at the bronchopulmonary segments on the left side left side of the lung what will be the bronchopulmonary segments on the left side of the lung again the same same important things so apical is on the right the left side also we have to write it as apical on the right side we have got posterior so here also 
we have got posterior here we have got anterior so here also we have to write it as anterior but still we have got two more remaining what are those two more remaining here one is called as a superior another one is called as a inferior now instead of lateral and medial we have just changed it as superior and inferior so only i think only i think these are the two things which are changed you see lateral instead of lateral we have write superior instead of medial we have write it as inferior right next next important thing is that everything is same down here i mean see s palm p a l m palm so superior basal posterior basal anterior basal lateral basal and medial basal these are the same so how many bronchopulmonary segments you have got 10 so what did i tell you additionally each bronchopulmonary segment is supplied by tertiary bronchus now all of you look here so this is a tertiary bronchus let us say let us say that this is the uh, trachea which is bifurcating right i am not drawing the entire bronchial tree but i'm just trying to show you that this is the bronchopulmonary segment like this you see this is the bronchopulmonary segment so this is called as a right superior bronchus right middle bronchus right inferior bronchus this is called as a left superior bronchus we have got the left inferior bronchus so this is the important thing which you need to know now whenever a patient is in a supine position if i ask you out of all these bronchopulmonary segments which is the most dependent part so that would be the superior basal superior basal on the right side when the patient is in an erect position that will be the posterior basal on the right side posterior basal on the right side so these are the important things which you need to know so these are some of the important things which you need to understand over here so now we shall be discussing regarding the arterial supply of the heart now as you can see over here right so this is your ascending iota now this ascending iota basically has got three important types of sinus so the first sinus which you can see over here right the first sinus which you can see over here is called as anterior aortic sinus so this is called as anterior aortic sinus because it is anteriorly located now what are the second and the third one now both of them two and three are located on the back right so that is called as posterior aortic sinus one is on the right one is on the left so we have to write it as a right posterior aortic sinus and another one on the left is called as left posterior aortic sinus okay so right posterior aortic sinus and left posterior aortic sinus so usually if you see here the right coronary artery we know in the heart we have got right coronary artery and the left coronary artery right now exactly exactly here we have got a trunk and this is called as pulmonary trunk okay this is the place where pulmonary trunk is present now above the pulmonary trunk from the third part that is the left posterior aortic sinus from here you have got the left coronary artery that is emerging and from the first one that is the anterior aortic sinus your right coronary artery is emerging okay so then what is 2 here 2 is also called as non coronary aortic sinus because no coronary artery is emerging from this okay this is called as non coronary aortic sinus so we shall discuss the blood supply and also we shall discuss some basic clinical points which are related with this okay so if you look at this if you look at this picture see here this is the right coronary artery which is coming down okay let me point it so you can see over here that the right coronary artery is coming down like this okay now this particular i hope this uh, pointer is clear to all of you let me use the green itself this right coronary artery is coming down now this right coronary artery goes on to the back of the heart okay it goes on to the back of the heart that is where i have written uh, i have drawn in the form of a dotted line okay this right coronary artery gives out a branch that supplies the inferior wall of the heart okay so this is called as your marginal artery okay i will write it down anyways so just remember that the right this is the right coronary artery right coronary artery comes down here and it goes posteriorly backward right coronary artery is giving two branches over here say one branch that goes like this and supplies to the sa node that is why you called as sa nodal artery 
The second branch is this one which supplies the inferior surface of the heart that is branch number one. This is called as right marginal artery. Okay, I will write it down later on. Next important thing. Okay, let me write it down now itself. So, the first important thing that uh, the right coronary artery branches, right? So, let us name branch number one. Branch number one over here is called as the right marginal artery right marginal artery okay now what is happening here what did i tell you the right coronary artery is going posteriorly backwards right so i have written in the form of a dotted line now from this right coronary artery on the back there is one more branch that is coming down on the back itself branch number two right so this branch is called as posterior interventricular artery why posterior because it is on the back why interventricular? Because it is between the two ventricles. Okay. The second important one is posterior interventricular artery. Posterior interventricular artery. Okay. Next important thing is that you see this artery over here is called as a left coronary artery. Okay. So let me write it out. This is your left coronary artery. Now from the left coronary artery, you see a branch that is coming down, I mean descending down anteriorly, right? It is descending down anteriorly, which you also call it as branch number 3. This is called as left anterior descending artery. What is this branch here? 3 is called as left anterior descending artery. This is your left anterior descending artery. Not only that, there is one more branch that is given on the side that is called branch number 4. And this branch number 4 over here, what is this called as? This is making a circle around the heart and going on to the posterior side. And not only that, it is also anastomosing with the right coronary artery on the posterior side. Right? So, this branch number 4 from the front which is going on to the back and anastomosing with the right coronary artery on the back side, on the posterior side, this one is called as circumflex artery. So, artery number 4 over here is called as circumflex artery. Okay. Now, after this circumflex artery, what is the next artery over here? The next artery is coming from the circumflex artery itself. There is one more artery that is hanging down like this. And this is your artery number 5. Right, so this one is called as left marginal artery. Artery number 5 is called as left marginal artery. So, what are the different arteries we have got over here? Right marginal artery, left marginal artery, posterior interventricular artery, left anterior descending, and circumflex artery. Right, now very important thing you need to understand over here is that what is this artery number 2 that is posterior interventricular artery? This posterior interventricular artery is giving a small branch which supplies to the AV node over here. So, that is called as septal branch of posterior interventricular artery which is supplying to your AV node. So, overall if you see, overall if you see here we have got the regarding the excitation tissue, there is SA node, AV node, then bundle office, you know right. So, here we have the SA node, here we have got the AV node, down here bundle office, right bundle, left bundle right right bundle branch left bundle branch so sa node av node and bundle office are supplied by the right coronary artery right bundle branch and left bundle branch are supplied by the left coronary artery okay now for example if left circumflex artery right if there is if there is any kind of occlusion or any kind of thrombosis in left circumflex artery where is left circumflex artery located? Artery number 4 here is called as left circumflex artery, right? Now, if this left circumflex artery is, uh, if there is thrombosis here, what will happen? This is a lateral wall, right? So, patient will have lateral wall MI. Lateral wall MI, myocardial infarction. For example, if the patient is having uh, uh, obstruction of left anterior descending, see this, this one is called left anterior descending. So, this is called as anterior wall MI. This would lead to anterior wall MI. Anterior wall MI. Okay. Next, if the septal branch is interrupted, that would lead to septal wall MI. Septal wall MI. Third important thing is septal wall MI. Next, if right coronary artery. 
so right coronary artery is supplying what see this is the right coronary artery supplying to your inferior wall right inferior i mean the lower surface of the heart so that would lead to what kind of uh, problem that is yes that is called as inferior wall mi inferior wall mi that is your inferior wall mi in the same way posterior interventricular branch will lead to posterior wall mi that would lead to posterior wall mi posterior wall mi so these are the important things which you need to know this is the clinical part which you see in medicine okay right let us discuss about another important thing that is the thoracic duct very very important concept so from where does this thoracic duct start thoracic duct starts from this particular structure which you can see here right you see this dumbbell shaped structure like this this particular structure over here is called as cisterna chile this is called as cisterna chile okay now from this where is this cisterna chile present cisterna chile originates from l1 and l2 vertebra so from the bodies of l1 and l2 so from the vertebral bodies of l1 and l2 your cisterna chile originates now from this cisterna chile from this cisterna chile you see a duct that has been starting where is this duct getting started this duct is getting started at the level of t12 so this duct which is ascending up this is called as thoracic duct now first of all let me label some structures over here and then we shall discuss the uh, course here now this particular artery over here is called as ascending aorta ascending aorta now after this ascending aorta is discussed we have got uh, uh, azygous vein right so this vein over here is called as azygous vein azygous vein after azygous vein we have got the hemi azygous vein hemi azygous vein okay and after that we have got the accessory hemi azygous vein hemi azygous as well as the accessory hemi azygous vein okay now here if you see this particular branch over here this particular branch over here this is called as the left common carotid artery left common carotid artery okay now after that the next branch which you have over here is called as a vagus nerve it is called as a vagus nerve okay next this particular artery over here, vein over here is called as a left internal jugular vein left internal jugular vein okay next uh, this particular vein over here is called as a left subclavian vein left subclavian vein over here right now so let us start discussing these uh, and and by the way what are these arteries these arteries are right posterior intercostal arteries which are directly emerging from the ascending aorta you see right posterior intercostal arteries intercostal artery now if you look at the structure over here this is cisterna chile originating from l1 and l2 now from this cisterna chile you see the thoracic duct this thoracic duct ascends upwards passes in front of right posterior intercostal arteries not only that it even passes in front of hemiazygous vein passes in front of accessory hemiazygous vein all the way till t5 now in the t5 what it is happening it is taking a left turn and it is ascending up and it is ascending up in the same way and finally where is this uh, thoracic duct draining this thoracic duct is draining at the junction between left internal jugular vein and the left subclavian vein so the junction between the left internal jugular and the left subclavian vein this is the place where the thoracic duct is draining thoracic duct is draining okay now there are three important tributaries for this thoracic duct what are those three important tributaries over here see one important tributary is, is left jugular trunk see this one is called left jugular trunk left jugular trunk is one tributary next one is called as left subclavian trunk left subclavian trunk and third one is called as the left bronchomediastinal trunk left broncho
mediastinal trunk so this is it guys so these are the important topics which you need to know in case of thorax so thank you so much for watching my video goodbye